Do you want a revolution? What if I told you that the same battle cry that started the greatest revolution in the history of the world, you could use to start a revolution in your career? As a player or as a coach, or even as a parent, wherever you are, if you will really, really embrace this battle cry, it will help you with the first steps of becoming the player that you were meant to be. Well, my name is Rick Williams, better known as Coach Rick. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna break down the battle cry of the American Revolution. What is that battle cry, you ask? It's simple. No taxation without representation. It's such an important concept that our forefathers stood on. I mean, they were willing to die for this concept. That's how important it was to them, that you cannot tax me. You cannot work me hard. You cannot take from me without first giving me an opportunity to be represented. Now, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a quick recap of the American Revolution just to brush up on our history, make sure you guys remember how we got here. Then we're gonna talk about how the four pillars of care actually work to make us more better represented when we show up to do what we love. So many times we are showing up to do the thing that we love, the thing that we know is going to tax us. It's going to be difficult if you're doing it right. We talk about that all the time. Difficult is the goal. But how can we do difficult things if we aren't represented well? That is an intolerable act that we will not stand for. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. Stick with me to the end, and I promise you, you will be able to always get better by the time we're done. All right, let's get into it. Let's just quickly, really fast, go through the history of the American Revolution and how we got to where we are today. Okay, now if you're not a history buff, just stay with me. I promise you by the end of the video, we'll bring this back to basketball and make it really, really relevant for you. But just there with me. All right, so here's how it goes. So we all know British colonies way over here. They sent some people way over here to discover the new land. Everything's working out just fine. We've got a bunch of people here. We've got a bunch of goods here and everything's working out. We're going to send you some of our goods over here to these colonies. You can sell them, send some of the money back to us. Then you send us some of your goods. We'll sell it. It's all working out pretty good, right? So we're still Great Britain. You're just the colonies of Great Britain. All is working well. All right, now, then these guys over here, they get into a conflict called the French Indian War. And that French Indian War is really, really expensive and it costs them a bunch of money. So then to recoup that money, they go to the colonies and they say, hey, listen, here's what we're going to do. You know how that free flowing market that we had going, we're going to just up that just a little bit. And we're going to start taxing you on the goods that we know that you use a lot. So they start creating these acts. OK, these acts are very important. There's a bunch of acts that you to know, but the three most important ones are the Sugar Act, the Townshend Act, and the Stamp Act. Okay, so you got three acts that basically laws making like they're like someone sends you a letter in the mail and tells you from now on you have to do this. Okay, and these acts tell us that we've got to pay taxes on stamp, which is like today someone telling you have to pay taxes to watch a YouTube video. I mean, it's it is the form of communication at the time. And then you got to pay taxes on your sugar, which sugar and tea was like the number one drink in both the colonies and Great Britain. So to pay taxes on that was just like not happening. Okay, like your Starbucks coffee, like it's not happening. Okay, so the American colonists took offense, not just to the idea of taxation, when King George said, hey, from now on, you have to pay me X to use the things you've already been using. But it wasn't just the idea of taxation. It was that the taxation, the extra money that I have to pay comes without representation, meaning that I have an opinion on how the sugar should taste. I have an opinion on how the tea should be made. I have an opinion on what the stamp should look like. I have an opinion on where I should live or how much this should cost. And I don't get to share that opinion. You're just over there thousands of miles away telling me how to feel, telling me how to think, telling me how to be. You're asking me to give a lot and you're not giving anything in return. I'm not okay with it. That's essentially what our forefathers did. They stood up and said, absolutely not. And then so they started, you know, their own little beef was like, here, here's what we're going to do. I show you what we're going to do with your tea. Okay. You want us to pay for your tea? We're going to dress up like Native Americans to, as a symbol, a symbol of freedom. And we're going to dump all of your tea into the harbor. So that we're going to show you, we don't even want your tea if you're going to make us pay 
for extra just to have it. So once we dump their tea, King George finds out about this. He's pretty upset and basically war starts from there. They send some people, they think they were gonna scare us, didn't really work, we weren't really that scared. We fought back, fought pretty well, shout out to the Minutemen. And then before you know it, it's a full-fledged war. Fast forward five, six years, we win said war. America is a country and we are now the United States of America. Now, how does that brief history lesson have anything to do with you as a basketball player today? You have a very taxing job ahead of you. To become one of the best basketball players in the world is not easy. It is going to take a lot out of you. There is going to be a certain level of taxation that you must prepare for. Now, we can have another conversation about the fact that maybe some of you are not feeling taxed at all. Maybe your off-season workout isn't taxing at all. Maybe you go once a week to the gym, you get shots up comfortably, you go home and you play video games. That doesn't feel very taxing. And so don't start a revolutionary war over that. If you're comfortable, then this video isn't necessarily for you. But for those of us who have been hearing this battle cry of work hard, work hard. If you want to get better, you've got to work hard. You've got to give it 100%. My question to you is, well, where do you get the strength from to give 100%? Who takes the time to talk about the things that you want in exchange for the hard work? Well, that's what's so important about the mental health awareness. Now, the concept of mental health awareness has been around since 1949 when it, when it was established by the Mental Health Awareness Organization. But but it's evolved over time because when it first started, it was ultimately more about educating the public on mental illness and the stigma that goes around mental illness, right? So that has been around for a long time. What has not been around for a long time that is coming around more often is the concept of mental health. Right. So while mental illness and the things of like schizophrenia and like, you know, big concepts have been around for a long time. The idea that you're just supposed to treat your mind in the same way that you treat your body or your spirit or anything else is a relatively new concept. And AGB is, is here for it. I mean, we're all in on the idea of the importance of mental health. I've shared with you guys before that I've had the the great pleasure of recently going through the program at Next. Shout out to my friends at Next and they're teaching neuroliteracy to anyone that is interested in understanding how the brain works. And I've had an opportunity to go through that course in its entirety, and it has changed my life. It has allowed me to truly see things for the way that they are and the way that my mind works and the way that our minds work together. And what I know for certain now is that it is important to maintain mental health. And it is not necessarily uh, about awareness of mental illness. Okay. So if you can get with that, then, you, then you're going to love the rest of this video because what we want to do is teach you the things that you can do to make sure that before you do the taxing work, before you submit to the taxation that is necessary for greatness, you must first represent yourself well. You must first allow yourself to be cared for. So in this month of May, I want you guys all to start putting more time into caring for yourself. Now, in this video, we're going to break down the four pillars of care, according to AGB Coaching. When you come work with us, we teach you how to use the concept of care to lead to confidence. That's the thing that we all need to be our best self. We need to be confident. Well, in order to be confident, you must first invest a lot of care. And here are those four pillars. The first one is you have to care for your goals. If the very concept of achieving what you want to achieve doesn't mean anything to you, then you're going to have a hard time getting to where you want to go. So care for goals. Number two is you have to care for yourself. So your eating habits, your sleeping habits, your mental health habits, those things are so important on the path to confidence. And the third one is care from other people. Oftentimes we have a hard time receiving care from other people. And then last but not least, is caring for other people. There is nothing that is more replenishing to you as a person than when you take care of someone else. We're going to break down those four concepts for you. If you're ready to care for your goals, here's what I want you to do. The first thing we're going to teach you is how to care for your goals. What I want you to do is press pause right now and I want you to go get a piece of paper, okay? You could use your notes app on your phone, but I don't know. I'm old school. I think it's a little bit more powerful when you take the time to write it down. So I want you to go get a piece of paper and a pen. 
Now, I want you to write down the goal that you want to achieve, all right? I want you to put, I want to start on varsity next year. I want you to put, I want to increase my win total from 10 wins to 20 wins. I want you to put, I want to increase my scoring average from 10 points to 15 points. Whatever the goal is that you have for next season, I want you to write that down on a piece of paper. After that, the next part of this exercise is I want you to write down everything that you can think of that's going to be taxing for this goal. All the things that you need to do in order to achieve the goal. Get up 200 shots, uh, make 200 makes a day, get in the weight room and lift. Whatever it is that you need to do in order to achieve the goal, I don't want you to think for a second about the things that get in your way or the things that make it hard to achieve the goal. I only want you to write down the list, this very daunting list, the thing that's been stopping you from doing it. Write down all of it. Once you have all that written down, then you can take the time to write down the things that are getting in the way. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have said this before. I want you to cut your paper in half. Okay. You fold your paper in half. And on this side, you're going to write all the things that you need to do. And on this side, you're going to write all of the things that get in the way of doing it. From there, the process is very simple. This is what you do. You fold the paper in half and you only focus on the front side. You just completely ignore the backside. The backside is full of excuses and reasons and and ideas on challenges on why you can't get something done. But if you truly care for your goal, that's the first thing I want you to do this summer is I want you to write down the goal, write down all the things you need to do and treat it like it's the only list that matters in the world. Right. And even though all those excuses are on the backside, I want you to literally see that you have to physically force yourself to turn that piece of paper in order to see them if you want to be blind to them, you can choose to do that. All right, that's step one. Step two is to care for yourself. You can care for your goals all you want, guys. You can you can do this exercise with the paper and you can be like, all right, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm going to do all these things that Coach said I should do. I, I'm in. All right. But if you aren't sleeping well, if you aren't eating well, if you aren't watching what you're putting into your mind, the music that you're listening to, the movies that you're watching, the people that you're hanging around, right? The substances that you're consuming. If you don't watch those things, it won't matter. I was talking to a player the other day. I, a good, good player, really, really great player. I love having this player around the program. And they came to me and they were talking to me about a lot of the struggles that they're going with right now. And something dawned on me as I was listening, which was that there was nothing I was going to be able to say that ultimately was going to change the position that this athlete was in. They were just in a really, really tough spot. And I realized in that moment that the only thing I could tell them to do was to stop, reset, listen to themselves and realize that they are running on E. Sometimes you have to acknowledge the fact that you are running on E and we are creatures. We are operating systems. We work a certain way, right? And just like your gas tank, your car needs gas, you need fuel. And this is what I'm saying about the idea of taxation without representation. It's an intolerable act. Don't go for it. Some people, and even me, I used to be this way. I'm going to will my way to everything. And if I don't will myself to do it, then I'm just soft. I'm just weak. I'm not good enough. And that's, it's just not true. We operate. And so we need to put the things in us to operate well. We do not allow people to pull from us without allowing us to speak for ourselves. In the same way, we can't keep taking away, keep trying to do all this hard work, working three jobs and, and trying to make it to basketball practice on time and, and having this relationship and homework. You can't do all of that without representation. And you need to represent yourself well by sleeping well, eating well, watching what you consume in your mind. All right, you guys do those three things and you'll find yourself operating at capacity. And at capacity, you have the capability to handle what was on that list when it comes to the care for your goals. All right, so you got your care for your goals, you got your care for self, you get those two things in check, check, check. Then you work on receiving care from others. So those first two things are very, very self-propelled things, right? I'm telling you to make the list and I'm telling you to take care of you. But what if you're struggling with that? What's the next step? The next step is to get a community of people around you that love you. Find people that care about you as a human being and surround yourself with them. It could be a mom, a grandparent, a dad, 
It could be a coach. It could be us at AGB Coaching. If you need somebody to surround you with support and mentorship, just reach out. That's why we're here. Find people around you that care about you genuinely. And if you really honestly feel like you're a person that does not have anyone, everywhere you look, people are consumed with themselves and no one cares about you. I want you to put that in the comments. I want you to reach out to me. I am going to call you right away. All right. Now, you only have one less thing to do to master the four pillars of care, and that is care for other people. There's nothing more selfish than being selfless. The fastest way to feel good about you as a selfish person, to be selfless and give to others. You know, it's so funny. It's actually the way our sport works. I tell people all the time, and those of you who played for me, you're probably going to be able to fi finish the sentence. What is the fastest way for you to get open in the game of basketball? The answer is to get someone else open. If I want to get open, all I have to do is go set a screen for someone. They will get, their man will get distracted by helping. And then I burst to the basketball and I'm open 95% of the time. Life works that way as well. The fastest way for you to feel open open and free and confident is to go make someone else feel open and free and confident. Set screens for people, proverbial screens for people, be there for others. We all in our game have teammates. If you're a basketball player, you have a teammate. I want you to call one of them today. Random, out of the blue, not a text, not a snap. I want you to pick up the phone. I want you to call one of your teammates and I want you to check on them and make sure that they're doing well. I want you to ask them questions about their list. What are the goals that you have for next season and what are you doing to accomplish those goals? That person at first will be like, bruh, are you good? I'm like, people don't do this anymore. You're calling to check up on me? You're concerned about me? You will send a jolt of energy through them in that third step that we talked about, receiving care from others. That's important to them. You can be that for somebody else. And in turn, it'll make you feel great about where you are. All right. So those are my four tips for you. Care for your goals, care for yourself, receive care from others. And lastly, go care for your teammates, coaches, athletes, community, people around you. Go show them some love. And all of that will get you to a place where you will not do taxation. You will not do the hard work of getting better at the greatest game in the world without representation. Make sure you take care. Mental Health Awareness Month is all about that. Make sure we are taking care of ourselves before we go out there and do the hard work of getting better. That is our video. Thank you for engaging. We want you to help you always get better. If you want to go on this journey with us, if you want us to walk you through these four uh, pillars of care and the rest of our program, click the link below. We'll be uh, sure to reach out to you. We are super excited about our Friday film sessions and our Wednesday workouts. All right. So this summer, if you're in Illinois or even if you want to travel to Illinois, AGB is coming live and in person on Wednesday nights. We're going to work out at Judson University. And on Friday nights, we're going to come virtually to you to break down film. If you've ever wanted to just grow your IQ through the process of watching film, we're going to break down uh, college basketball games, NBA basketball games, and even for some of you, if you turn your video into us, we will break down your film with you and a group of people through our uh, special community. So if you're interested in our Wednesday workouts and or our Friday film sessions, click it in the link below. There'll be a description there. We look forward to seeing you. Until then, always get better. <laughs>